Hi, bio people. We're back. And today we're going to be starting a new unit. This is actually one of my favorite units that we cover all year in Bio 400. Um, and it's going to be about circulation. And so today, by the end of the screencast, you should be able to describe the structure of the human heart, its different chambers, and you should be able to be familiar with the three circulation loops that we're going to learn about. Okay, so this is a healthy human heart, which they have taken out of a donor. And this heart actually has some of the blood vessels still attached to it. So if you look up here very carefully, you can actually see that there are some very large blood vessels coming out of the top of the heart. So you can actually see another one kind of back here like this. And this person also has a little bit of fatty tissue around the outside of the heart. So right here and up here, but not very much. Now we can see what it would look like inside an obese person. And so you can see that the heart is the same basic shape, but it's covered in this sort of greasy tissue on the bottom portion, so right down here. Um, and this is what we call fat or adipose tissue. And so if this person's heart has this much fat on the outside, we can only imagine what the insides of all their blood vessels look like. They may or may not be clogged, and that might lead to some of the conditions that you guys researched earlier this week for homework. Now one thing that's pretty common in obese patients is having what we call arterial plaque, which is where you have fat in the walls of your artery that gets stuck to them. And sometimes these can actually break off and get stuck in different places around the human body, and they can cause uh, any number of different kinds of conditions, but the most common are going to be stroke, a heart attack, or a pulmonary embolism. And the difference between all three of them really just depends on the location that that chunk of fat gets stuck. So if the chunk of fat gets stuck, for instance, in your brain, then we call that a stroke. It's going to prevent oxygen from going to all the parts of the brain that need it. If it gets stuck in the blood vessels that supply the heart muscle, we call this a heart attack. And if it gets stuck inside the blood vessels of the lungs, we can call this a pulmonary embolism. Now, all of these things can kill you, and the way that they kill you is because they block blood flow to a specific area, which prevents something like the heart from getting the blood that it needs in order to contract, or it prevents the brain from getting the blood that it needs, or it prevents the lungs from getting the blood they need. Okay, so there are three major types of blood vessels that you're going to need to know about, and they're going to be in sort of decreasing order of size here. And our first one is going to be called an artery, and our second one is going to be called a vein, and our last ones are going to be called capillaries. So something that I want to make sure that we get out of the way before we go any farther is that we are going to disprove what your elementary school science teacher may have told you. Um, so there is no such thing as blood in the human body that is blue. Uh, if you look at real blood from real people, if you see blood that's coming directly out of an artery that's full of oxygen, it's sort of this bright red color. And then if you have a vein that's cut, it doesn't look blue. It actually just looks sort of more of a dark maroon color, but it doesn't actually become blue. However, because it's a little bit confusing to have different colored reds in our diagrams, we're going to stick to the traditional uh, key of having red meaning oxygenated blood and blue meaning deoxygenated blood, even though there really isn't any such thing as having blue blood. So the first blood vessel that we're going to talk about is uh, the artery. And what you're going to notice about arteries and veins is that there are things that are always true, and then there are some things that are usually true. So arteries always carry blood away from the heart. And a good way to remember this is that uh, artery and away both have the letter A, and that helps some people to remember this. Now, even though arteries always go away from the heart in terms of their direction, they usually carry blood that's high in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide, but not always. And we're going to learn about the exceptions to that rule later on. And the last thing that you should know about arteries is that they have these really thick muscular walls. And so if we look back at our uh, drawing of the artery over here, we can see that we drew it being really thick and much bigger than veins. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about veins. And the thing that's always true about veins is that they always carry blood going back towards the heart and never in the opposite direction. And just like arteries, they have a type of blood that they usually carry. And veins usually, but not always, carry blood that's low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide. And the last thing that you should know about veins, at least in this general sense, is that they have thinner and less muscular walls. You can't feel a pulse in a vein. Last but not least, we're going to talk about capillaries. And capillaries are the smallest types of blood vessels. Now, they have to reach every single cell in your entire body in order to deliver oxygen and pick up carbon dioxide. So they're going to be significantly smaller than either arteries or veins. 
So if this is my cell right here, it's going to have a capillary that's going to deliver oxygen-rich blood to it from this direction, and then it's going to have another capillary that's going to remove the oxygen-poor blood going in the opposite direction. Now notice that the cell and the capillaries are both about the same size. So when we move on to diagramming the heart, you're going to see these two types of blood vessels right here, arteries and veins. We're now going to learn about three major circulation loops. The first loop is called the systemic loop, which includes the entire circulation system in the body except for the heart and lung tissue. The second system is called the pulmonary circuit, which involves the blood going to the lungs from the heart and back again. And the last loop is called the cardiac loop. Don't forget that the heart itself is a muscle, and every muscle needs to have oxygen. So the heart tissue itself needs to have oxygen delivered to it on a regular basis. We're going to start by diagramming the systemic and pulmonary loops simultaneously. And we're going to start off by connecting the body and the heart. So down here, I've drawn a little stick figure, and the stick figure is going to represent the body. First, we're going to connect the body to the heart using a blood vessel that we're going to draw in blue. This vein is called the vena cava, and you actually have two branches, one that comes from your head, shoulders, and neck, and one that comes from your entire lower body. This blood vessel brings deoxygenated blood into a chamber called the right atrium. Remember that whenever we're talking about a bodily structure, we always refer to the patient's left or the patient's right. So even though this side of the heart right here is on our left, it's actually on the patient's right. The blood will then move out of the right atrium through a small opening that looks like this. We're going to call this valve number one, also known as the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve has tiny little doors on it in order to prevent the blood from backflowing and flowing in the wrong direction. The blood will go through the valve into the right ventricle, the second chamber in the process. The deoxygenated blood will then flow out of valve number two. Valve number two is called the pulmonary valve. The blood then flows into a new blood vessel that we see here on this side of the heart, which is called the pulmonary artery. Now this tends to be where people get confused because they look at this blood vessel and they're confused about why it's an artery but is carrying deoxygenated blood. Don't forget that arteries always carry blood away from the heart and they usually carry oxygenated blood, but the pulmonary artery is the exception. Because the pulmonary artery flows away from the heart, it's still an artery even though the blood it's carrying is deoxygenated. The pulmonary artery delivers this blood to the lungs, where they're bringing in oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide with each breath. Inside the tissues of the lungs, each red blood cell gets rid of its carbon dioxide and picks up molecules of oxygen instead. This oxygen sticks to the hemoglobin on the outside of the blood cells, just like we talked in our la about in our last unit. The blood will then exit the lungs using a new blood vessel which we're going to call the pulmonary vein. Remember that the pulmonary vein is technically still a vein because it moves towards the heart rather than away from it, even though it carries oxygenated blood. The pulmonary vein empties into the left atrium of the heart. From there, it flows through a third valve. We call this third valve the mitral valve. Just like all the other valves, the mitral valve has doors in order to prevent backflow. You only want the blood to flow in one direction. You never want it to flow in reverse. The blood will then flow into the fourth and final chamber, which is called the left ventricle. The left ventricle is the chamber that does the majority of the pumping. And if you touch the four different chambers of the heart, you'll notice that the left ventricle's walls are the thickest, and they feel the most muscular. They feel a lot like the muscles of somebody that works out a lot, as opposed to somebody who does not work out a lot. Because this particular part of the heart contracts somewhere between 60 and 180, 190 beats per minute for your entire lifetime. When the left ventricle contracts, it squeezes blood out through the fourth and final valve of the heart. This valve is called the aortic valve. This fourth valve is called the aortic valve because it empties into the largest blood vessel in the body, an artery called the aorta. 
the aorta is roughly the same diameter as your thumb, so it's pretty big and carries a huge volume of blood every minute through your body. The aorta eventually splits into many smaller arteries that supply blood to all the parts of the body. So far in this diagram, we have two of our three major circulation loops. Here we can see both the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. Remember that the systemic circuit is going to involve transporting blood from the body to the heart and back again, except for the heart muscle tissue itself and for the lung tissue. The pulmonary loop is a separate section involving taking blood out of the heart, sending it to the lungs, and then bringing it back to the heart. But now we need to discuss our third and final loop, the cardiac loop. Let's remember that the heart consists of muscular tissue, and muscular tissue requires a lot of oxygen to keep going. The tissues of the heart need to be continuously supplied with oxygen. Simply having the blood running through the heart is not enough. We need to divert some of that blood supply in order to supply a lot of oxygen to keep the heart pumping. Just after the aorta exits the left ventricle, it actually splits off into a smaller blood vessel. This other blood vessel is called the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries wrap around the outside of the heart and deliver the blood to its tissues. If we go back to these pictures, we can actually see the coronary arteries. The aorta right here in this picture on the left is around in the back of the heart, so we can't see it very well, but this blood vessel right here is part of the coronary artery system, and it's wrapped around the outside of the heart. Unfortunately, we can't see it in the obese patient because their heart is wrapped in adipose tissue. Once all the oxygen has been extracted from the blood by the heart muscle tissue, the blood will return to the right atrium through vessels called the coronary veins. The deoxygenated blood will be added back into the circuit in the right atrium and go through the process all over again. We've now seen the three major circulation loops. However, there are a couple of things that I want you guys to keep in mind about the circulatory system. Number one being that this diagram is not anatomically accurate in the sense that this is not how all of the blood vessels actually look. All of the connections here are correct. For instance, the vena cava actually does deliver blood from the body into the right atrium. However, it doesn't extend way far out to the side of the heart. Similarly, the aorta doesn't actually come way out to the bottom of the heart the way I've shown in this diagram. It's actually nestled very closely against the back of the heart. The reason that I've drawn all these blood vessels this way is to help us to understand the way the blood circulates through the heart. And that's really difficult to do until you've actually dissected out all of these blood vessels and tracked where all of them lead to. I also want to draw your attention to this final circulation loop that we looked at during the last part of the screencast. This picture right here is meant to show that the heart muscle itself is nourished by a separate circulatory loop. This is not a separate structure, it's just meant to show us that the heart muscle itself does require a very continuous supply of oxygen. Also, a quick note on valves. There are multiple names for each of the four valves in the heart. For instance, the tricuspid valve can also be called the atrioventricular valve. These two names refer to the same structure, but I won't require you to know both of them. However, you should be familiar with the four names that we saw earlier in the screencast, so tricuspid, pulmonary, mitral, and aortic, and where they are in the heart. Since pretty much everything in medicine has a dirty mnemonic to help you remember it, here is one for the valves, T-P-M-A, also known as toilet paper, my arms.